What's up YouTube, Michael here. Today I'm gonna build a blow-off valve equipped intake for the Sea-Doo. So, I've kinda already got started here. Um, so these are the two, I guess, charge pipes, if you will. Go from the supercharger to the intercooler, from the intercooler to the throttle body. So, what I've got so far, if you can see up in here, it's a 3-inch inside diameter 45-degree boot. And this is a reducing coupler from 2 and 5 8 inch to 3-inch. Got a 90-degree 3-inch intercooler piping that I've just I've started cutting on it already. Uh... And then I got two nine degree cuts out of a straight piece of three inch piping. So these are called pie cuts and this is what you use when you don't have a nice uh, mandrel bender. So uh, you just set your chops all up to nine degrees or I mean you can really get creative and cut as much as you want but I, I seem to find that the, the nine degrees works well when you piece them together. Um, so what I'm going to start by doing is get these two welded together and make that one piece. Then I'm going to fix it up in here and weld it together. Let's see if we can get you in there. And then I have just about a one inch piece wedged up in there. Up in the boot here. There's about one inches of uh, aluminum intercooler piping in there. So, once that's done, I'll weld this nice eBay tile knockoff right there. And uh, a real tile was like $280. This eBay China one was like $32. Now I have a, a real one on my race car. Being that it's turbo, it, it kind of needs it because the turbos they'll take a beating without a good blow off valve so I feel like a good quality one's a good investment on something like that but I mean this Sea-Doo here wasn't even equipped with a blow off valve so it's not 100% necessary although it wasn't equipped with a catch can either and I'll be building one of those shortly I think you know a catch can is is 100% beneficial but the blow off valve uh, you know it'll relieve the pressure that's built up in the intercooler and the charge piping whenever you're under boost and you let go of the throttle and the throttle body closes you know there's a lot of pressure there so it you know it'd be good to blow that off I don't see how it would hurt anything and as far as where I'm gonna route to get a vacuum source the only place that you can pick up a vacuum source is right here. On the older model 300s, you have to remove your ECM to get to this plug. It's just held in by one E8 little bolt. So what I'm gonna do is drill it and tap it right here, and then thread one of these barb fittings in. Now, I mic this out with my calipers here, and it was like 400 thousandths of an inch, and this is 460 thousand so i'm actually going to go and pick up an eighth inch ntp i believe this here is quarter inch so something a little bit smaller and i'll drill and tap it then i'll have my barb coming out of right here like so and i'll run my hose just like that um And the easiest way to do it is I could have just cut this factory hose and put a piece of aluminum in the middle and then welded the fitting or flange, if you will, right there and been done with it. But I want to keep my factory hoses just in case. You never know when you might need it or I'm sure they're probably $400 a piece from Sea-Doo. And you can actually buy a kit, a blow-off valve kit for the... RXTX 300 but it's $500 
So, given the tile blow off valves, about you can probably pick them up for about two fifty if you shop around. That's still another two hundred dollars for a a couple of pipes. Now the kits do come with two pipes. That's where I'm only making one pipe, but thirty dollars for a blow off valve, a couple of cold side fittings I had laying around or cold side piping if you will that I picked up over the years I just I got a whole box over there full of it that I just chop on and whittle on as I need it and then this uh, silicone reducer was also $30 because um, that is like the only company that I could find that makes one in those dimensions so I'll probably have under I don't know 80 bucks to have a good function and blow off valve in here so I'm gonna go like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get these welded up. Start here, get these welded up, get the pipe all welded up. Then I'll probably use my hole saw, an uh, inch and three quarters about the inside diameter of this. I punch a hole in it right here, then I'll weld that flange onto that pipe. And uh I will need to get two two more three-inch hose clamps if I can't find any laying around. I'll be able to reuse the stock. Four that I pulled off is I'm obviously putting this charge pipe back on it goes right there from the supercharger to the intercooler so go ahead and get some aluminum prepped up for well I time lapse is pretty boring and I did a time lapse when I take welded this up uh, and again I'm not trying to make welding tips and tricks videos because, you know, I just, I just wing it. But uh, the most important thing is, is, is cleaning it. So, this was without any filler rod. This filler rod. So, basically, I just bond the two pieces together. I think I did it twice, but I started on my second one. But, uh, you know, you want to scuff it up real good with a stainless steel wire brush. And then acetone. Lots of acetone. The cleaner it is, the better the product. But uh, the reason I'm not gonna record all of this or even do it in time lapse is because this piece is so small that the heat has nowhere to go. So this little weld right here might be an inch and a half. And this, this piece of aluminum probably got to four or 500 degrees. So. You weld about an inch, inch and a half, and I gotta go put it in front of the fan and let it cool down. Um, Cause if this piece gets too hot, when you go to put, dab your filler rod, it'll just poke straight through it. And then from there, the whole, the whole tubing will just fold in. And uh, you can come back and kind of recover from it, but it's just a pain in the butt and it doesn't look pretty. But uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see inside there. You know, great penetration and if, if you do want to know more about TIG welding, you know, put it in the comments and maybe I can do some more uh, tips and tricks as far as the TIG welding side or I can tell you what I have my machine set up to as far as frequency and hertz and all and amps for cheap eBay intercooler piping. But I'll go ahead and pick up right here and run a little bit of a beat in real time. course when the video is on or the, when I'm recording you know there's gonna be some pressure there 
but this definitely doesn't look as good. See, I can barely hold it with my glove. It'll make my glove smoke. That's how hot it is. So, what I got to do now is go hold this in front of the fan, cool it down, come back over here, weld another inch and a half, two inches, repeat, repeat, repeat. So, you know, TIG welding is quite a tedious process, but if I was to take these two pieces to a local machine shop or welding shop and have them TIG welded together, that'd be minimum $30 or possibly $60 for an hour because they'll just say, you know, minimum of one hour. They'll weld as much as you want in one hour or they'll just straight charge you $30 to, to fire up the torch, you know, to weld a bong or something. So. All right, we're back to finish it up today. I had a couple change of plans here. Uh, got it all buckled down in there with some hose clamps, a little band clamp. Got my hose running up. Got to put a couple of hose clamps on it. But like I said, I was originally going to take this piece and just drill it out and tap it, but I couldn't get a 1 16th uh, barb fitting because this ended up being a quarter inch. I thought it was a 3 8 or I thought it was a quarter and I could use an eighth inch, but it turns out it was eighth, so I needed a sixteenth, and I couldn't find one local, so I just went ahead and took a piece of aluminum, a quarter inch thick, and uh, laid out my two holes, drilled it, and then tapped this hole for the barb fitting, as you can see there, and uh, bought some gasket material, glued it on there, so hopefully it will seal being that this one's got a little o-ring deal on it so i'm just going to bolt this on hook up the hose with a couple hose clamps and uh pull it out of the garage and hook some water up on it and see if it'll function for us all right the bow off valve's hooked up the hoses are hooked up and i tested it and it seems to work fine uh, but i did notice um that the bow off valve here is wide open at idle and i mean it's just pushing a ton of air out um, and that may be what they're supposed to do on a supercharger. This is actually my first ever supercharged application. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on that. I might have to put a stiffer spring in it to close it up. I don't know, uh, you know, if that's going to affect, uh, throttle response, but, uh, I'll go ahead and crank it up so you can check it out. It's like a hundred dollars versus $500 to do it yourself. Like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of research on the blow-off valve, whether it's supposed to be open or closed at idle. Um, and if I find that it's good to go, the only thing left to do is put it on the water and see if the boots and all can hold the boost. Hopefully I won't have any boots come off and uh, have to limp it back to the boat ramp. Alright, I'm on the Ortega River. It's in Jacksonville, Florida. It's not the greatest river. The water sure isn't pretty. But uh, just out here testing the blow-off valve. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that you can't hear it. I don't know if it's all the wind noise. Like on my race car, you know, twin turbo. When you when you lift out of the throttle, I mean, you know, you hear it. You can't miss it. But uh, on the jet ski, I'll say you can't you can't really hear it. I can hear it venting like when I do that before it closes, coming off of idle. I can hear it. But uh, as far as when I'm wide open and I let go of it, I can't hear it. 
mean, I'm sure it's working, but so it doesn't necessarily have the cool factor that it does, you know, on like a turbo car or something like that. But uh, I don't appear to have any boost leaks. It's still running 71, so that's a good thing. That's why I came out here today, just uh, just gonna ride around for about an hour or so. I just wanted to test it to make sure it was good to go, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate real quick. Put this bad boy in launch mode. And uh, see if I can hold on to it one-handed. Let's see here. Y'all watch that trigger over there. I do feel like there's a slight delay now, but it might just be in my mind because I know that the blow-off valve is open at idle. Then when I hit the throttle, it has to close, so I know there's some venting there, but like I said, it's really hard to tell. Um, the way I did this for, you know, roughly $100, you know, to, to save a lot of life on your supercharger clutch, I think it's well worth the investment, so. All right, so I was convinced that the blow-off valve being open at idle was causing a delay in throttle response. Um, because I, I noticed before, like if I didn't have it in launch mode or the variable trim setting, if, uh, if I just stabbed the throttle wide open, the ski would actually come out of the water and skip a couple times. And with the blow-off valve like it is now, when I would hit it, it wouldn't do that. It would just come right up in plane. So I definitely felt like the, the throttle response wasn't as instantaneous as it was before. So I did some research and I uh, decided to change the springs and the eBay blow off valve came with two springs, you know, a six pound spring and an 18 pound spring. So for all I know, it could have been two pounds and 48 pounds, who knows, right? Um, so I went ahead I tried the 18 pound spring and it wouldn't open at all. It wouldn't vent, period. Then I cut a couple coils off of it, it still wouldn't open. So I went ahead and uh, I hooked up a vacuum gauge to the engine and see where it idled. And I ended up ordering uh, a genuine tile nine pound or white spring and put it in there and it worked like a champ. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that. I made a little video as well. You can check that out. But, uh, so that's it for the do-it-yourself blow-off valve on the 2020 SeaDoo RX TX 300. Uh, if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe. Thank you.